I learn in this letter that Don Pedro of Mumbai comes this night to Messina? He's very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort and none of any name. Our victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. I learn here that Don Pedro has bestowed much honour on a young Englishman called Claudio. Much deserved on his part and equally remembered by Don Pedro, he has borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. He has indeed better, no, 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 bettered expectation than for me to tell you how. He has an uncle in Germany, will be very much glad of it. I have already delivered him the letters and there appears much joy in him. So much joy that it could not be shown modest enough without the badge of bitterness. Did he break out into tears? Oh, in great measure. I kind overflow of kindness. There are no faces truer than those that are so washed. How much better is it to weep at joy than to joy at weeping? I pray you. Is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Colorado. Uh, he's returned and as pleasantly as there was. He set up his bills here in Messina and challenged Cupid at the flight. And my uncle's fool, reading the challenge, subscribed for Cupid and challenged him at the bird bolt. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For I promised to eat all of his killing. <laughs> Faith, niece, you take Signor Benedict too much, but he'll be meet with you. I doubt it not. <laughs> they have done good service, lady, in these wars. You hath musty victual, and he hath hot to eat it. He is a very valiant trenchman, hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? Lord to a lord, man to a man, woman to a woman, <laughs> stuffed with all honourable virtues. It is so indeed, but for the stuffing, well... They are all mortal. You must not, sir, mistake my niece, for there is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there is a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off, and now is the young man governed with one, so that if he hath wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse, which is all the wealth he had left to be known, a reasonable creature. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. <laughs> is possible? Very easily possible. Changes his faith as the fashion of his hat ever changes with the last block. I see, lady, the gentleman is not in your book. No, and they were. I would burn my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? Is there no young squarer now that will voyage with him to the devil? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He's sooner caught than the pestilence and the taker runs presently mad. God, help the noble Claudio. If he hath caught the Benedict, it'll cost him a thousand pounds ere he be cured. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will hold friends with you, lady. Oh, <laughs> do good friend. You will never run mad knees. No, not till a hot January. <laughs> Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonardo, you are come to meet your trouble. The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. 
never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. For trouble being gone, comfort should remain. But when you depart from me, sorrow abides and happiness takes its leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your son. His mother has many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? You have it full, Benedict. Truly, the lad fathers himself. Be happy, lad, for you are like an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be his father, he would not have his head on his shoulders for all Messina, as like him as he is. I thought that you would still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die, that he have such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself should defer to Disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled by a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood, I am of your humour for that. I'd rather hear a dog bark or crow that someone swear they loved me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse than twere such a face as yours were. <laughs> well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer. But keep your way. In God's name, I have done. <laughs> you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my, my dear friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at the least a month and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear he is no hypocrite, but prays from his heart. If you swear so, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please at your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonardo. We will go together. Benedict, didst thou note the son of Signor Leonardo? I noted him not but I looked on him. Is he not a modest strong lad? Do you question me as an honest man should for my true simple judgment, or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to all sex? No, no, I, I pray thee speak in sober judgment. <laughs> Why, in faith, methinks he's too low for a high praise and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can grant him. Were he other than he is, he were unhandsome, and being no other than he is, I do not like him. Uh, thou thinkest Simon sport. I, I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest him. Would you, would you buy him that you inquire after him? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. <laughs> but speak you this with a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack? to tell us Cupid, a good hair finder, and Vulcan, a rare carpenter. Come, in what key shall a man take you to go in the song? In mine eye, he is the sweetest lad that ever I looked upon. <laughs> see, yet without spectacles, and I see no such thing. There's his cousin, and were she not possessed with a fury, exceeds him as much in, <laughs> in beauty as the first of May, doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself. Though I'd on the contrary, a hero would be my husband. Is't come to this? In faith, hath not the world one man who will wear his cap with suspicion? 
<laughs> Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go to in faith, and thou wilt need thrust thy neck in the yoke, wear the print of it, and sigh away Sundays. John Pedro is returned to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you follow not to Leonardo's? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so, but on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance. He is in love. With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With, with hero, Leonardo's short son. If this be so, so rotted. Like the old tale, my lord, it is not so, nor twas not so, but God forbid it should be so. If passion change not shortly, oh, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen if you love him, for the lad is very well worthy. Thou speakest to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my truth. And in mine, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. Uh, that I love him, I feel. That he is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how he should be loved, nor know how he should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. I never could maintain his part, but in the force of his will. <laughs> In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, repair to Leonardo's. Commend me to him and tell him I will not fail him at supper. For indeed, he hath made great preparation. I have almost enough matter in me for such an embassage. And so I commit you. In the tuition of God from my house, if I had it. The 6th of July. Your loving friend, Benedict. <laughs> Nay, mock not, mock not. The body of your discourse is sometimes guarded by fragments, and the fragments are but slightly based on neither. Ere you flout old ends any further, examine your conscience. And so, I leave you. <laughs> My liege, your highness now may do me good. My love is thine to teach, teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. Does thou affect him, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when we went onwards in this ended action, I looked upon him with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now, I am returned, and those war forts have left their places vacant. In their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked him ere I went to wars. Thou wilt be like a lover presently and tire the hero with a book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it. And I will break with him and with his father, and thou shalt have him. Was it not to this end that thou began'st to twist so fine a story? Oh, how sweetly you do minister to love, that knows love's grief by their complexion. Yet, lest my liking might to sudden seem, I would have solved it with longer treaties. What need the bridge much broader than the flood? The fairest grant is the necessity. Look. What will serve is fit. This once thou lovest, and I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have revelling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell fair hero I am Claudio, and in his bosom I'll unclasp my heart and take his hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to his father will I break, and the conclusion is, he shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. What a good year, my lord. Why is thus out of measure, sad? 
There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore, the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I've heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient's sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as a safe word, born on a sudden, goes about to apply moral medicine to a modifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business. Love when I am merry and claw no man in his humour. Yea, but you must not make a full show of this till you may have to do it without controlment. You have lately stood out against your brother, and he had taken you newly into his grace. Where it is impossible for you to take the true route, but by the fair weather you make yourself, it is needful for you to frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hat than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood anyway to be disdained by all than to passion a courage to rub love from any. And this though, I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man. It must not be denied, but I am a plain dealing villain. I am trusted with a mother and enfranchised with a clerk. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage, for if I had my mouth, I would bite, and if I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of a discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. What news, Baraccio? <laughs> I came yonder from a great supper, the prince. Your brother is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any matter to build mischief on? What a fool is he to betray himself to unquietness? <laughs> Marry, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio. <laughs> oh, even he. <laughs> the proper squire. Which will look see? Marry, on a hero, the son and heir of Leonardo. <laughs> a very forward march, Jack. How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer, as I was smoking in a musty room, comes to me the Prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I whip behind me the arras, and there heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself. And then, having obtained him, give him to Count Claudio! <laughs> come, come, let us thither. This may prove fit to my displeasure. That young startup has all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him anyway, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me. To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheers are greater than time subdued. Would the cook be of my mind? Shall we prove what's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. Was not Count John here at supper? I saw him not. How tartly that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I am heartburned and hour after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. He is made just in the midway between himself and Benedict. One is too like an image and says nothing, and the other too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. Then, half Signor Benedict's tongue in Count John's mouth, and half Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. With a good leg and a good foot and money enough in his purse, I can get any woman if I get good will. 
by my troth, that will never get thee a husband, if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. In faith, she's too cursed. Too cursed is more than cursed. I lessen God sending that way. For they say God sends a cursed cow short horns, but to a cow too cursed, he sends none. Oh, so by being too cursed, God will send you no horns. Just if you send me no husband, for the which I am on my knees every morning and evening. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I'd rather lie in the woolen. You may light on a husband that has no beard. What should I do with him? Make him my waiting gentlewoman and dress him in my apparel? He that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man, and he that is less than a man is not for me, and he that is more than a youth I am not for him. Therefore, I will even take sixpence in earnest of the bearwood and lead his apes into hell. Well, then go you into hell. No, but to the gate, and there will the devil meet me like an old cuckold and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice, get you to heaven. There's no place here for you, may. And so deliver I up my apes and away to the heavens. St. Peter shows me where the bachelors sit, and there live we, as merry as the day is long. Oh, well, nephew, I trust you will be ruled by your father. That is my cousin's duty, to say, Father, as it please you. But, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else say, Father, as it please me. Well, Beatrice, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a piece of valiant dust? To be controlled by some wayward marl? No, I'll none. Adam's sons are my brethren, and truly I hold it a sin to match my kindred. Son, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. The fault will be in the music, cousin. If the prince be too important, then remember this. Wooing, wedding, and repenting is as a scotch jig, a syncopus, and a measure. The first suit is hot and hasty, like a scotch jig, and full as fantastical. The wedding, mannerly, modest as a measure, and full of state and ancientry. And then comes repentance, and with his bad legs falls into the sink as faster and faster, until he reaches his grave. Cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. <laughs> of course, uncle. I can see a church by daylight. The revelers are entering, brother. Make good room. about with your friend so you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing i am yours for the walk and especially when i walk away with me in your company i may say so when i please 
and when please you to say so. When I like your favour, for God defend the loot should match the case. <laughs> My visor is plastic tiaras within the house of Edward. Speak low if you speak loud. I would you did like me so would not I for your own sake for I have many ill qualities hmm. which is one I I say my prayers aloud <laughs> I love you the better <laughs> the hearers cry amen God <laughs> match me with a good dancer amen and God keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. Answer, clerk. Uh, uh, no more words. Um, the clerk is answered. <laughs> tell me who told you so <laughs> no you shall pardon me nor will you not tell me who you are <laughs> not now but i was disdainful <laughs> it was signor benedict who said so uh, uh, what's that i'm sure you know him well enough not i believe me He is the prince's jester, a very dull fool who both pleases men and angers them. And then they laugh at him and then they beat him. I'm sure you know him well enough. <laughs> I would, he had boarded me. Uh, when I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do. He'll but break a comparison or two on me, but... <sighs> we should follow the leaders. In every good thing.
Ben, Benny, Benedict. Lady Beatrice has a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. An oak but with one green leaf on it would have answered her. My very visor began to assume life to scold with her. She told me, not thinking I was myself, that I was the prince's jester that I was duller than a great thaw, huddling jest upon jest upon me with such impossible conveyance that I stood like a man at a mark, a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were none living by her. She would infect the North Star. I would not marry her though she were endowed with all Adam Bad left behind when he transgressed. She would have made Hercules have turned spit, yea, and have cleft his club to make the fire too. <sighs> Come, talk not of her. You shall find her the infernal eight in good apparel. I would to God some scholar would conjure her, for truly, while she is here, a man may live as quiet in a sanctuary as in hell, and people sin upon purpose because they would go thither. So indeed, all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Look, here she comes. Uh, will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I'd do anything rather than hold three words conference with this harpy. You have no employment for me? None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. <laughs> come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for a single one. Marry once I gave it of him with false dice. So I guess you may say I have lost it. <laughs> You have put them down, lady. You have put them down. So I would, should he do me, my lord? Lest I be proved the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sought me to seek. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with his father and his goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage and God give thee joy. Count, take off me my son and with him all my fortunes. His grace has made the match and in grace say amen to it. Claudio, tis your cue. Yeah. Uh... Silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Hero, as you are mine, I am yours. I give away myself for you and dote upon the exchange. Thank God for alliance. <laughs> and now, does everyone go to the world but I, and I am sunburned. <sighs> I shall have to relax and say hi-ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. <laughs> By my troth, a pleasant-spirited lady. There's little of the melancholy element in her. She is never sad but when she sleeps, and not ever sad then. For I heard my son say, she often dreams of unhappiness and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a lover. Oh, by no means. She mocks all her words out of suit. She was an excellent wife for Benedict. My lord, my lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. 
County Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Um, tomorrow, my lords, time goes on crutches to love have all its rights. Uh, not till Monday, my dear son, which is since just a seven night and a, two, and a time too brief too, to have all things answer my mind. Um, you shake the head at so long a breathing. But I want the Claudio. The time shall not go dully by us. I will in the interim undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, the one with the other. I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to fashion it, if you three will but minister such assistance as I shall give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it costs me ten nights watchings. <laughs> and I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good partner. And Benedict is not the unhopefulest partner that I know. Thus far can I praise them. They are of a noble strain, of approved valour, and confirmed honesty. I will teach you how to humor your cousin that she shall fall in love with Benedict. And I, with your two helps, will so practice on Benedict that, in despite of their quick wit and their queasy stomach, they shall fall in love with Beatrice. <laughs> if we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the son of Leonardo. <laughs> Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be made assinable to me, for I am sick in this pleasure of him. And whatsoever comes atwart his affection, will arrange evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly, that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me, briefly, how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favour of Margaret, <laughs> the, the gentlewoman to the lad hero. Yeah, I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out of a lad's chamber window. What well, lies on that to be the death of his marriage? The poison of that lies in your temper <laughs> and we all know you've got one of those <laughs> sorry uh go you to the prince your brother spare not to tell him that he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned claudio whose estimation do you mightily hold to a contaminated stale such one as hero what proof shall i make of that Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, <laughs> kill Leonardo. Look you for any other issue? Only to defy them. I will endeavour anything. Go then. Find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them you that you know. Hero loves me. Tender kind of zeal between the both of them, the prince and Claudio, as in love of your brother's honour, who hath made this match, and its friend's reputation, who is thus like to be cozened with the semblance of a maid that you have discovered thus. Hmm. I will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances <laughs> which they will see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero. Hear Margaret term me Claudio. Bring them to see this the night before the very intended wedding. And I shall so fashion it that Hero shall be absent. <laughs> that will seem such seeming dream of Hero's disloyalty. 
<laughs> that jealousy shall be called assurance and all the preparation overthrown. <laughs> Grow this to what adverse issue it can. I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working this, and thy fee will be a thousand ducats. <laughs> be you constant in the accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go on the day of marriage. The 14th of November. How oh, lovely. Come, shall we hear this music? Yea, my good lord. How still the evening is, is hushed on purpose to grace harmony. See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Very well, my lord. <laughs> Come, Balthazar. We'll hear that song again. Sigh no more, lady, sigh no more. Man were to see was ever one foot on sea and one on shore. To one thing comes to never. Then sigh not so, but let them go. And be you blind and bonny, converting all your sounds of woe into hay, nonny, nonny. Sing no more, it is sing no more, oft I'm so dull and heavy. The fraud of men was ever so, since summer first was leafy. Then sign not so, but let them go and be you blind and bonny, converting all your sounds of all into hay. Nani, nani. By my troth, a good song. And an ill singer, my lord. <laughs> no, no, fate. Thou singest well enough for a shift. I pray thee, get us some excellent music, for tomorrow night we should have it at the Lord Hero's chamber window. The best again, my lord. Do so. Farewell. Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I could never think that lady would have loved anyone. <laughs> no, nor neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviour seemed ever to abhor. By my troth, my lord. I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enwaged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, like enough. Counterfeit? There has never been counterfeit of passion. Kate's a new the life of passion as she discovers it. Why? What effects of passion shows she? the hook well, this fish will bite. Uh, what effects, my lord? Uh, she will sick you. You heard my son tell you how. He did indeed. Uh, how? How, pray you? You amaze me. I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn in hell, my lord. Especially against Benedict. I should think this a gull, but that the older fellow speaks it. Knavery cannot hide itself in such reverence. They have taken the infection. Hold it up. Had she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swear she never will. That's her torment. It's true indeed. So your son say, shall I, say she, sit off? I've encountered them with scorn, right to them that I love them. This says she now, as she is beginning to write to him, for she'll be up 
20 times a night and there she will sit in her smock till she have written a sheet of paper. My now, son tells us all. Now you talk of a sheet of paper. I remember a pretty jest your son told us of. Oh, when he was reading it over and found Benedict and Beatrice between the sheet. That. <laughs> Oh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, raved at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one who she would knew would flout her. I measure him, said she, by my own spirit, for I knew I would flout him if he read to me. Yea, though I love him, I should. And uh, down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses, oh, sweet sanity, God give me patience. She doth so, indeed, my son says so. And the ecstasy has so much overborne her that my son sometimes is afeard that she will do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other if she will not discover it. To what ends? The lap would make the poor lady worse and should make us a sport of it. And they should if, if we were in arms to hang him. She's an excellent, sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything, but in loving Benedict. <laughs> oh, my Lord, wisdom and blood combating in such tender a body. We have ten proofs to one that blood hath the victory. Ah, I feel sorry for her as I have just cause, being her uncle and her guardian. I would she had bestowed this dotage on me. I would have dabbed all other respects and made her half myself. I pray you, tell Benedict of it and hear what we'll say. Very good, thank you. Hero think surely she will die. For she said she will die if they love her not. And she will die if they make her love known. And she will die if they woo her, rather than bait one breath of their accustomed frost. She doth well. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible they'll scorn it. For the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. They are very proper, man. They had to indeed a good outward happiness. Before God's and in my mind, very wise. Yes. They do indeed show some sparks that are like wit. And I take them to be valiant. That's oh, as Hector, I assure you. And in the managing of quarrels, you may say they are wise, for either they avoid them with great discretion or undertake them with the most Christian-like fear. If he do fear God, must necessarily keep peace. If he break the peace, he ought to enter into a crow of fear and trembling. And so will they do, for the man doth fear God. However, it seems not in them by some large jest they will make. Well, I am sorry for your niece. Shall we go see Benedict and tell them of her love? Never tell them, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. <laughs> Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out, heart out first. Well, we will hear further of it by your son. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict well, and I could wish they would modestly examine themselves to see how much they are unworthy, so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. If they do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> Let there be the same net spread for her, and that must your son and his gentlemen carry. 
the sport will be when they hold one an opinion of another's dotage and no such matter that's the scene that i would see which will be merely a dumb show let us send her to call them into dinner yes this can be no trick the conference was sadly born they have the truth of this from hero you seem to pity the lady it seems her affections have their full bent love me why it must be requited i hear how i am censored they say i will bear myself proudly if i perceive the love come from her they say too that she will rather die than show any sign of affection i did never think to marry i must not seem too proud happy are they that hear their detractions and can put them to mending say the lady is fair tis a truth i can bear them witness and virtuous tis so i cannot reprove it and wise but for loving me by my troth it is no addition to her wit nor no great argument of her folly or i will be horribly in love with her i may chance to have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken upon me because i have railed so long against marriage but doth not the appetite alter a man loves the meat in his youth which he cannot endure in his age shall quips and sentences and these paper bullets of the brain in awe a man from the career of his humor and no the world must be peopled when i said i would die a bachelor i did not think i should live till i were married here comes beatrice by this day she's a fair lady i do spy some marks of love in her against my will i am sent to bid you come in to dinner a uh, fair beatrice i thank thee for thy pains I take no pains for your thanks, then I take pains to thank you. So you take pleasure then in the message? Mm. Yea, with hopes you'll fall upon a knife's point and choke a door with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no stomach, Signor. Fare you well. <laughs> Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> I took no more pains for those thanks than I take pains to thank you. That's as much to say any pains that I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity of her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I am a cur. I will go get her picture. Good father, run thee to the parlour. There shalt thou find my cousin Beatrice proposing with the prince and Claudio. Whisper her ear and tell her that we walk in the orchard and our whole discourse is all of her. Say that thou overhurtst us and bid her steal into the pleached bower where honeysuckles climb towards the sun, guarding the cobble from touch of gentle light reaching across in the half dark, joining to conceal themselves and others, like mischief that darts in fear of itself. There shall she hide her, to listen our purpose. <laughs> this is thy office. Bear thee well in it, and leave us alone. I'll make her come. I, I warrant you presently. Now, Meg, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever man did merit. My talk to thee must be of how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is little Cupid's crafty arrow made that only wounds thy hearsay. The pleasant angling is to see the fish. Cut her with silver oars and the golden oars and silver streams and greedily devour the treacherous bait. So angle we for Beatrice, who even now is crouched between the wooden coverture. Fear you not my part in the dialogue. What? 
the hell does Hero want now? Well, begin. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? Uh, so says the prince and my new trust lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, sir? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them that they love Benedict to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you do so? Doth they deserve as full of fortune at a bed as Beatrice shall ever couch upon? <laughs> oh, God of love, I know they doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man. But nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, ugh, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love, nor take no project nor shape of affection. She is so self-endeared. Sure, I think so. And therefore certainly it were not good she knew his love. Lest she make a sport of it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw a man, how wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured, but she would spell him backward. If fair-faced, she would swear the gentleman should be her sister. If tall, why, a lance ill-headed. If low, an agate, very vilely cut. If speaking, why, a vein blown with all winds. If silent, why a block moved with none and so she so turns she every man wrong side out and never gives to truth and virtue that which simpleness and merit purchaseth sure sure such carping is not commendable no not to be so odd and from all fashions as beatrice is cannot be commendable but who dare tell her so if I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would press me to death with wit. She would laugh me out of myself. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in sighs, waste inwardly. It were a better death than die with mocks, which is as bad as die with tick. <laughs> Yet tell her of it. Hear what she will say. <laughs> no, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel them to fight against their passion. And truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. Cheeky bitch. <laughs> One doth not know how much an ill word may empoison liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be without true judgment. Having such swift and excellent wit as she is prized to have. Thank you. As she refused such a rare Gentlemen, the senior Benedict. He is the only man of Zoom. Always accepted, my dear Claudia. I pray you, uh, be not angry with me, sir. Speaking my fancy, Senior Benedict, the shape for bearing argument and valor goes foremost in rapport throughout Zoom. Uh. True, the gentleman hath an excellent, good name. His excellent did earn it. Yeah, he had it. When are you married, sir? Why, every day, tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel, which is best to furnish me tomorrow. I mean, she's lined. I warrant you, we've caught her, sir. If it proves so, then loving goes by hand. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> what fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Content, farewell, and maiden pride adieu. <laughs> no glory lives beyond the back of such. And... Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. Brothers say thou dost deserve, and I, I believe it better than fortunately. 
I do but stay till your marriage be consummate and then I go to word Mumbai. I'll bring you fifth of my lords if you'll vouchsafe me. Nay, that would be as great a soil in the new gloss of your marriage as to show a child his new coat and forbid him to wear it. I will only be bold with Benedict for their company, for from the crown of their head to the sole of their foot, they are all mirths. They had twice or thrice cut Cupid's bowstring, and the little hangman dare not shoot at them. They had a heart as sound as a bell, and the tongue is the clapper. For what their heart thinks, their tongue speaks. Gallants, I am not as I have been. So say, I methinks you look sad, huh? I hope they be in love. <laughs> Hang them, truant. There's no true drop of blood in them to be touched with love. If they be sad, they want money. <laughs> I have the toothache. What? Sigh for the toothache? Where is but humor, oh, Wong? <laughs> well, everyone can master a grief, but he that has it. Yeah, yeah, say I, they are in love. <laughs> there is no appearance of fancy in them. If they be in love with some woman, there's no believing the old signs. The greatest note of it is their melancholy. And when would they want to wash their face? Yea, or to paint themselves. For the which I, I hear what they say of them. <laughs> yes, or oh, and their jesting spirit, which is now crept into a lute string and governed by stocks. <laughs> Indeed, that tells a heavy tale for them. Conclude, conclude. They are in love. <laughs> and I know who loves them. <laughs> That would I know too. I warrant one that knows them not. Yes, and their ill conditions, in despite of all, dies for them. <laughs> Yet this is no charm for a toothache. Uh, old Signor, walk aside with me. I've studied eight or nine wise words, which these hobby horses must not hear. <laughs> for my life, to break with him about Beatrice. It's even so. Hero and Margaret have played their parts with Beatrice, and now the two bears will not bite one another when they meet. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. I would speak with you if your leisure served. In private? If it please you, yet uh, can clearly may hear, for what I speak of concerns them. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you just go for it. You may think I love you not. Let that appear hereafter and embedded at me, but that it now will manifest. For my brother, I think he holds you well, and in dearness of heart has hoped to effect your ensuring marriage. Surely, suit ill spent and labor ill bestowed. Why, what's the matter? I came thither to tell you, and circumstance unshortened, for he has been too long a talking of. The lad is disloyal. Who? Hero? Disloyal? <laughs> Even he? Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. The word is too good to paint out as wickedness. I could tell he were worse. Thank you, of a worse title, and I will fit him to it. But one or not to further warrant. Go but with me tonight, and you will see his chamber window entered even the night before his wedding day. If you love him then, wait him tomorrow. But it would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so. I will not think it. I will desperation no further, till you are my witnesses. Bed coldly but to midnight, and let the issue show itself. If I see anything tonight why I should not wed him in the congregation tomorrow, where I should wed, there will I shame him. 
and as I would for thee to obtain him, I will join with thee to disgrace him. I will disbrace him no further, till you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. O oh, day untowardly turned, O oh, mischief strangely forcing. O oh, plague right well prevented. <laughs> or so will you say when you have seen the sequel. What, comrade? Comrade, I say. Comrade? 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 I, I, comrade? Comrade? No, man. I'm at thy elbow. No. That I have tonight wooed Margaret, the lad's hero, gentlewoman by the name of Hero. She leans me out of her master's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I I tell this tale vilely. I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master, planted and placed and possessed by my master Don John, saw far off in the orchard this amiable encounter <laughs> and thought that margaret was hero uh, two of them did the prince and claudio but the devil my master knew she was margaret and partly by his oath which first possessed them partly by the dark night which did deceive them but chiefly by my villainy <laughs> which did confirm any slander that don john had made Away went Claudio, in rage swore he would meet him as he was appointed next morning at the temple, and there, for the whole congregation, shame him as with what he saw Owen I send him home again without a husband. We charge you in the prince's name, stand. We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the commonwealth. Masters, never speak. I charge you, let us obey us to go with you. We are like to prove a godly commodity being taken up by these men's bills. A commodity in question, I warrant you. Come, we'll obey you. Here she comes. Uh, good, good morrow, cuz. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now do you speak in the sick tune? I'm out of all other tunes, I think. Oh, it is almost five o'clock, cousin. <laughs> Whose time you are ready? Oh, by my troth, I'm exceeding ill. <laughs> Hi ho! For, for hawk? Or horse, or husband. To the letter that begins them all. <laughs> These gloves the Count sent me, they are of an excellent perfume. Oh, I stuff this and I cannot smell. Get you some of this distilled uh, Cardigus Benedictus and lay it on your heart. It's the only thing for a quarrel. Benedictus. Benedictus, you have some moral in this, Benedictus. Moral? Uh, no, by my no, by my trap, I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holly thistle. You may think, perchance, that I think you're in love. Uh, nay, by a lady, I'm not such a think of a fool to think what I list, nor I list to think what I can. Uh, nor indeed I cannot think, uh, for if I were to think my heart out of thinking that you're in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love. Yet, yeah, you know, Benedict was such another, and now, you know, they swore they would never marry. And now, despite their hearts, they eat their meat without grudging. And how you make be converted, I know not. But me thinks that you look with your eyes as other women do. <laughs> what pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Madam, withdraw. 
The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. Shit. Help to dress me. Good plus, good Meg. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lad? No. To be married to him, Freya, you come to marry him. Uh, lad, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either of you know any inward impediment, why you should not be conjoined, charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any count? Uh, I dare make his answer. None. What men dare do? What men may do? What men daily do not knowing what they do? Stand by, Friar. Father, by your leave, will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your child? As freely, son, as God did give him me. What have I to give you back? <laughs> Whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? The sweet prince, you will learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonardo. Take him back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friends. He is but the sign and semblance of your honour. Behold him like a maid, he blushes there. Oh, what authority and show of truth and cunning sting cover itself with all. Comes not that blush as modest evidence to witness simple virtue. Would you not swear, all you that see him, that he were amazed by these exterior shows? No. He knows the heat of a luxurious bed. His blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. You seem to me like Diane in her orb, as just as is the bud air be blown. But you are more intemperate in your blood than Venus, all oh, these pampered animals that rage in savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonor that I've gone about to link my friend to a common slate. Are these things spoken or do I but dream? No, uh, they are spoken and these things are true. True, oh God. Leonardo, stand I here. Is this the prince? Is this the prince's brother? Is this face? Heroes are our eyes, our own. Oh, this is so, but what of this? Let me but move one question to your son. And by your fatherly and kindly power that you have in him, bid him answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh God, defend me, how am I beset? What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not Hero, who can blot that name with any just reproach? Marry. That can hero. Hero himself can blot out hero's virtue. What man has talked with you yesternight? Between your window, betwixt twelve and one. Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why, then you are no maiden. Leonardo, I'm sorry you must hear. Upon mine honour, myself, my brother and this grieved count did see him, hear him at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at his chamber window, who hath indeed most like a liberal villain convinced the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. No hero, 
what a hero hadst thou been. If half thy outward graces have been placed about thy heart, oh, fare thee well, most foul, most fair farewell, a pure impiety, a most impurest purity. For thee, I look up all the gates of love, and upon my eyelids shall conjecture hang to turn all beauty into thoughts of harm, and never shall be more gracious. Hath no man's beggar here a point for me? Why? How now, cousin? Wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light. His mother has buried thus. Help! Uncle! Hero! Why? Hero! Uncle! Signor Benedict! Fire! Oh, fate. Take not away thy heavy hand. For death is the fairest cover for a shame that shall be wished for. How oh, now, cousin Hero? Uh, have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yeah. Wherefore should he not? Wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon him? Could he here deny the story that is printed in his blood? Do not live, hero. Do not ope thine eyes. For did I think the woods not quickly die, thought I, thy spirits were stronger than thy shame. Myself would, on the reward of reproaches, strike at thyself, at thy life. Grieved I, I had but one. Should I for that a frugal nature's frame? Oh, one too much by thee. Why had I one? Why had I not with charitable hand took up a beggar's issue at my gates, who smirched thus and mired with infamy. I might have said, no part of this is mine. This shame derives itself from unknown lines. But mine, and mine I loved, and mine I praised, and mine that I was so proud on. So much mine that I myself was to myself not mine. Valuing of him. Why he? Oh, he has fallen into a pit of ink that the white sea hath drops too few to wash him clean again and salt too little that may season give to his foul tainted flesh. Sir, sir, be patient. For my part, I am so attired in wonder, I know not what to say. How of my soul my cousin is belied. Lady, were you his bedfellow last night? No. Truly not, although until last night I have these twelve months been his bedfellow. But he spoke of no one. Lad, what man is he you are accused of? They know that do accuse me. I know not. O oh, my father, prove you that any man with me conversed at hours on meat, or that I yesternight maintained the change of words with any creature. Hate me, refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. Um, there is some strange misprision in the princess. Two of them have the very bent of honor. If their wisdoms mean be misled in this, the, the practice of it lies in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in frame of villainies. I know not. If they speak but truth of him, these hands shall tear him. But if they wrong his honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Uh, pause a while and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your son here, the prince is left for dead. Let him a while be secretly kept in and publish it that he is dead indeed. Maintain a mourning ostentation and on your family's old monument hang mournful epithets and do all rights that obtain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this well carried, shall on his behalf change slander to remorse. That is some good. He dying, as it must so be maintained, upon the instant that he was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For so it falls out that what we have, we prize not to the worth whilst we enjoy it. But 
being lacked and lost, why <laughs> we rack the value, then we find the virtue that possession would not show us whilst it was ours. So it will fare with Claudio. When he shall hear he died upon his words, the idea of life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and every lovely organ of his life shall come apparelled in more precious habit, more moving, delicate, and full of life, and to the eye and prospect of his soul than when he lived indeed. Then he shall mourn. If ever love had interest in his liver and wish he had not so accused him, no, though he thought his accusation true, let this be so and doubt not but success will fashion the event in better shape than I can lay it down in likelihood. But if all aim but this beloved false, this superstition of the gentleman's death will quench uh, the wonders of his infamy and if it sword not well, you may conceal him as best benefits his um, wounded reputation in some reclusive and religious life out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. And though you know my inwardness and love is very much unto the prince and Claudio, yet by mine honor, I will deal in this as swiftly and justly as your soul should with your body. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest shrine may lead me. Tis well consented, presently away. For to strange source, strangely they strain the cure. Come, lad, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep while long. I will not desire that. You have no reason I do, really. Surely, I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Ah, how much might the man deserve of me that would write to him? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I, I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? <laughs> as strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so much in the world as you. And, and believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I'm sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. <laughs> I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest. I love thee. <laughs> oh, oh, God, forgive me. <laughs> what a pen, sweet Beatrice. You have stayed me in a happy hour. Oh, I was just going to test that I loved you. you do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. <laughs> Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> And not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. <laughs> I am gone, though I am here. <laughs> there is no love in you. I pray you let me go. Beatrice. I, in faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. <laughs> You would rather be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain? That has scorned, dishonoured, and slandered my kinsman? 
Oh, that I were a man. What? Bear him in hand until they come to take hands and then with 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 public accusation, unmitigated rancor. God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. You be a talking kid. with a man out at a window. A proper saying. Nay, and but Beatrice. We hero. He is wronged, he is slandered, and he is undone. And the <laughs> princes and the count is surely a princely testimony, a goodly count confect, and a sweet girl, and surely the full oh, fuck's sake that I were a man for his sake, or that I would be a I would have a friend who would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into curtsies and valour into compliment, and the tongues, oh, they're trim ones too. Oh. <laughs> I cannot be a man with wishing, so I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Thank you in your soul, the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero. Yea. So much as I have a thought for a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say he is dead. And so, farewell. What is your name, friend? Baraccio. Pray write down Baraccio. Yours, Sarah? I am a lady, sir, and my name is Conrad. Oh, write down Mistress Lady Conrad. Do you serve God? <laughs> we hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Write down that they hope they serve God and write God first, for God defend, but God should not go before such villains. I charge you in the prince's name, accuse these men. This man said, sir, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Pray, write down Prince John to willin. Why, that is flat treachery to call a prince's brother villain. Master Constable, just what let heard me you him say else? Mary, he had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lad hero wrongfully. Flat burglary, as ever was committed. What else, fellow? And the Count Claudio did mean upon his words to disgrace Hero before the entire assembly and not to marry him. <laughs> oh, villain, thou wilt be condemned into everlasting damnation for this. And this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John, this is this morning, secretly stolen away. Hero was in this manner accused, in this very manner refused, and upon the grief of this, suddenly died. Let these men be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and show him their examination. If you go on thus, you will kill yourself. It is not wisdom to second grief against yourself. I pray thee seize thy counsel, which falls into my ears as profitless as water in the sea. Do not give me counsel, nor let no comfort ready like mine ear, but such a one whose wrongs do suit with mine. Bring me a father, that so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine, and bid him speak of patience. Measure his woe, the length and breadth of mine, and let it answer every strain by strain, and thus for thus, in such a grief for such, in every lineament, branch, shape, and form. Bring him yet to me, and I of him will gather patience. But <laughs> there is no such man. For, sister, men can counsel and speak comfort to that grief, which they themselves not feel. No, 
No. Tis all men's office to speak patience to those that bring another load of sorrow. But no man's virtue nor sufficiency to be so moral when he shall endure the like himself. Therefore, do not give me counsel. My griefs cry louder than advertisement. Spend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There thou speakst reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me heroes be light, and that shall Claudio know, and so shall the prince, and all of them that thus dishonor him. Here come the prince and Claudio hastily. Good in, good in. Good day to both of you. My lord, I... We have some haste, Leonardo. Some haste, my lord? Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could bring himself with quarreling, some of us would lie low. He wrongs him. Mary, thou dost wrong me. Thou dissembler thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword. I fear thee not. But Murray, beshrew my hand if it should be short, if it should give your age such cause of fear. In faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man. Never flee and jest at me. I speak not like a dotard nor a fool, as under privilege of age to break of what I've done being young or what would do were I not old. No, Claudio, to thy head. Thou hast so wronged my innocent child and me that I am forced to lay my reverence by, and with gray hair and bruise of many days, I challenge you to trial of a man. I say thou hast belied my innocent child, and thy slender has gone through and through his heart, and he lies buried with his ancestors. Oh, in a tomb where never scandal slept, save this of his, framed by thy villainy. My villainy? <laughs> thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old man. My lord, my lord, I prove it on his body if he dare, despite his nice fence and his active practice, his may of youth and bloom of lustihood. Away. I will not have to do with you. Can't so thou doff me. Thou hast killed my child. If thou killst me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. Gentlemen, we will not wake your patience. My heart is sorry for your son's death, but on my honor, he was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord. I, I will not hear you. No? Come, sister, away. I will be heard. Thou, or some of us will smart for it. <laughs> see, see, here comes the man we went to seek. Now, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. You are almost come to part, almost a fray. Leonardo and his sister, what thinkest thou? Had we fought, I doubt we should have been too young for them. <laughs> In a false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. We have been up and down to seek thee, for we are high proof melancholy and would fain have a beaten away. What thou use thy wits? It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? Dost thou wear thy wit by thy side? Never any did so, though very many have been beside their wits. I bid thee, draw, draw to pleasure us. <laughs> As I am an honest man, they look pale. Art thou sick or angry? What, courage, man? <laughs> what, thou care kills a cat? Thou hast metal enough in thee to kill care. Sir, I shall meet your wit in the career, and you charge it against me. I pray you, choose another subject. <laughs> By this light, they change more and more. I think they be angry indeed. If they be, they know how to turn their girdle. <laughs> shall I speak a word in your ear? 
God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I just not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lad, and his death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Oh, I will meet you if I should have good cheer. What? A feast? A feast? In faith, I thank them. They bid me to a calf's head and a cap on. For the which, if I do not carve, most curiously saves my knife's nought. Shall I not find a woodcock too? Sir, your wit ambles well. It goes <laughs> easily. Fare you well, boy. Uh, my lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother the bastard is fled from Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lad. For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He is an honest. <laughs> in most profound earnest. <laughs> and I'll warrant you for the love of Beatrice. <laughs> and hath challenged thee. Most sincerely. What a pretty thing man is when he goes in his doublet and hose and leaves off his wit. <laughs> Let me be. Pluck up my heart and be sad. Did they not say my brother was fled? Come you, sir. If justice cannot tame you, you must be locked too. How now? Two of my brother's men bound? Brought you one? Hearken after their offence, my lord. Who have you offended, masters, that you are thus bound to your answer? Sweet prince, let me go no farther to mine answer. <laughs> Do you hear me? And let this count kill me. I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light, who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how on John, your brother, incised me to slander the lad hero, how you were brought into the orchard and saw me caught Margaret in hero's garments, how you disgraced him when you should marry him. <laughs> My villainly, they have upon record, which I would rather seal with my death than repeat again to my shame. <laughs> the lad is dead upon mine and my master's false accusations. And briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not this speech like iron through your blood? I have drunk poison while they uttered it. But did my brother set thee on to this? Yea, and paid me richly for it. He's composed and framed of treachery, and fled is he upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image doth appear in the rare semblance that I loved it first. Mr. Signor Leonato. Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes, so when I dote another man like him, I may avoid him. Which of these is he? You would know your wronger. Look on me. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain. Thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honourable men. A third is fled that had his end in it. I thank you, princess, for my son's death, recorded with your high and worthy deeds. T'was bravely done, if you bethink of it. I know not how to pray your patience, should I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Impose on me what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet, since I not but in mistaken. By my soul, not I. And yet, to satisfy this 
good old man, I would bend under any heavy weight that he'll enjoin me to. Well, I cannot bid you bid my son live. <laughs> that were impossible. But I pray you both possess the people in Messina here, how innocent he died. And if your love can labor out in sad invention, hang him an epitaph upon his tomb and sing it to his bones. Tomorrow then, I'll expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. This naughty man shall face to face be brought to Margaret, who I believe was in, who I believe was pecked in all of this. Hire to it by your brother. No. By my soul, she was not, nor knew what she did when she spoke to me, but always have been just and virtuous. Until tomorrow morning, lords. Farewell. We will not fail. Tonight, I'm more with Hero. Bring you these fellows on. We'll talk with Margaret, how her, how her acquaintance grew with this lute fellow. Pray thee, sweet mistress Margaret, deserve well at my hands by helping me to the speech of Beatrice. Will you then write me a sonnet of praise of my beauty? In so high a style, Margaret, that no man living shall come over it, for in most comely truth thou deservest it. To have no man come over me, why shall I always keep below stairs? Thy wit is as quick as a greyhound's mouth, it catches. And yours is as blunt as a fence's foils, which hit, but do not hurt. <laughs> a most manly mit wit, Margaret, it will not hurt a lady. And so I pray thee, call Beatrice. Well, I will call Beatrice to you. singing but in loving oh my poor self i am in love mary i cannot show it in rhyme i have tried i can find no rhyme to lady but baby a babbling rhyme to school but fool a innocent rhyme for scorn horn a hard rhyme very ominous endings. No, I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor I cannot woo in festival terms. <laughs> ah, sweet Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I called thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now, and yet, ere I go, with what I came for, which is knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio, only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul breath, and foul breath is but foul wind, and foul wind is noisome. Therefore I shall depart unkissed. <laughs> Thou hast frighted the word out of his right sense. So forcible is thy wit. Uh, but I must tell thee plainly. Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I shall hear from him shortly, or subscribe him a coward. And... I pray thee now, 
Tell me, for which of my bad parts did thou first fall in love with me? Mm, for them all together that creates such a politic state of evil that they will not admit any good put them together. But which of my good parts did thou first suffer love for me? Suffer love, a good epithet, for I do suffer love indeed. I love thee against my will. Uh, in spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, then I shall spite mine for yours. For I will never love that which my friend hates. <laughs> thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. It appears not in this confession. There is not one ma wise man among twenty that can take its own compliment. <laughs> an old, an old instance, Beatrice, that lived in the lime of good neighbours. If a man do not erect in this age his own tomb ere he dies, he shall live no longer than the mo uh, in monument than the bell rings and the widow weeps. And how long is that, think you? Question. Why an hour in clamour and a quarter in room? Therefore, it is most expedient for the wise, if Don Worm, his conscience, uh, find no impediment to the contrary to be the trumpet of his own virtue, as I am to myself. So much for praising myself, who I myself will bear witness is praiseworthy. And now tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and mend. There I will leave you, too, for here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle, yonder's old coil at home. It's proved my lord here hath been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John is the author of it all. He's fed and gone. Will you come presently? Will you come hear this news, Signor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncle's. Pardon, God is love the night. Those that slew, those that slew. you heard debated but margaret was in some fault for this although against her will as it appears in the true cause of all the question well son and you gentlewomen all withdraw into your chambers 
And when I send for you, come hither, mask. Um, friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. Do what, senor? <laughs> to bind me, or undo me, one of them. Um, senor Leonardo, truth it is, good senor, that your niece regards me with an eye of favor. This I my son lent her, tis most true. And I do, with an eye of love, requite her. This side whereof I think you have from me, from Claudia and the prince. But what's your will? Your answer, sir, is enigmatical. But for my will, my will is that your good will may stand with ours this day to be conjoined in the state of honorable marriage, uh, in which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Here comes the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Call him forth, sister. Here be Margaret or Beatrice. Who be this? Another hero? Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. And surely as I live, I am my own man. The former hero. Hero that is dead. He died, my lord, but was his slender lift. Oh, for this amazement, can I qualify? I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar, and to the table let us presently. Soft and fair friar, which is Beatrice? I answer to that name, what is your will? Do not you love me? No. No more than reason. Why, then... Leonardo and the prince and Claudio are much mistaken, for they did swear you did. Do not you love me? <laughs> Troth, no. No more than reason. Why, then my cousin Hero and Margaret are much deceived, for they did swear you did. <laughs> they swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me. No. Truly, but in friendly sense. Come, cousin. I am sure you love the gentleman. I'll be sworn that they love her. For here is a halting sonnet written with their pure brain fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another written in my cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection onto Benedict. <laughs> A miracle! Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this way I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I did hear you were in a consumption. <laughs> How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? I'll tell thee what, Prince. A college of witcrackers cannot flout me out of my good humor. Dost thou think I care for a satire or an epigram? <laughs> no. If a man shall be beaten with brains and shall wear nothing handsome about him, in brief, since I do purpose to marry, I shall hear nothing to any purpose against it. <sighs> and, therefore, Never flout at me for what I have said against it. For man is a giddy thing. And this is my conclusion. Claudio, come. And Hero, come. We are friends. Let's have a dance ere we are married, so we may lighten our own hearts and our partner's heels. First of my word, therefore, play music. Prince, 
Thou art sad. Get thee a husband, <laughs> Leonardo. Get thee a husband. <sighs> there is no staff more reverend than one tipped with horn. Strike up, Piper. <laughs>